It's almost summertime and we're planning some fun stuff for you and your family. Come to our huge backyard for a free kids camp, 6 to 8 p.m., June 21st through the 24th. You'll not want to miss the fun with art, getting messy, and learning to work with teams, culinary skills, and discovering where true confidence comes from and how to live it. Then bring the family for Snow Cone Friday, June 25th from 6 to 8 p.m. for games, music, and fun. A women's group combining devotions and nature walking begins June 1st at 7 p.m. When you sign up, you will be informed which trail and park you will meet at each week. Are you and your family looking for a fun place to serve this summer? Try our giving garden at Mosaic at St. Andrew. You can adopt a garden bed and plant and harvest vegetables. Help water the plants, package them for delivery to local food pantries, or support our composting and sustainability efforts. The countdown is on towards our launch of Mosaic at St. Andrew on September 19th. Come and help us meet our goal by rolling up your sleeves and enjoying our work days. We are painting, nailing, moving, and otherwise getting our building in shape for the big day. Come Wednesday evening and between 5 and 8.30 and Saturday morning between 9 and 2. Your help will make a huge difference. Come join the choir for traditional worship at Mosaic at St. Andrew. Invite friends. In-person rehearsals start on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. beginning June 2nd. Come enjoy the outdoors and pray that God would bless our neighbors as you walk or drive with family or friends. Our next prayer walking and driving is Wednesday, June 2nd from 6 to 7 p.m. Maps and prayer guides will be provided. You can also hop on the website and virtually prayer walk our campuses. We can't wait to hear how God is moving and working in and through your prayers. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship at Mojek at Saint Andrew. Good morning and welcome to our Pentecost worship at Mosaic at St. Andrew. I'm one of the pastors, Lunthy Ward. What is Pentecost? It is a celebration of the birth of the church, a day when the lives of followers of Jesus was transformed, when God's Holy Spirit was poured out on them. The book of Acts chapter 2 in the Bible records what happened in Jerusalem on this very special day. We are in a new sermon series, Dunamis, and I am grateful for those who have come from many areas of the world to read our scripture today. Chegando o dia de Pentecoste, estavam todos reunidos num só lugar. De repente, veio do céu um vento muito forte e encheu a casa na qual estavam assentados. Ni lile ni agbagbola mi, le na tamo, la lile puen, ni batra ameite e kome kome, ni momokonkron bayi ame, fen abobo, ni ame bon yuemo kokome, yuemo tamo boni, momo le. Kebu Na adenti na yeti se warika unyangu pong awangu juma hong asem wa yeng a yeye party fo medi fo ne elam fo ne wong a wati Mesopotamia ni Judea ni Cappadocia Pontu Asia Phrygia ne Pamphylia Mizraim ne Libya fa a efikuren ne ahoho a wofi Roma. Judah fo ne wong a 
Wasakra Abba Yudasumu, Creator for Ne Aria Rabi for Mubiara Kasamuyi. Alle waren voll Staunen und Bestürzung und einer sprach zum anderen. Was hat das zu bedeuten? Andere aber riefen spottisch lachen. Sie haben sicher so viel süßen Wein getrunken. Da erhob sich Petrus mit den Elf und sprach mit lauter Stimme. Ihr Juden, die ihr hier im Lande wohnt, und ihr anderen alle, die ihr jetzt vor Üben gehen in Jerusalem verweilt, dies soll euch kund sein. Hört darum auf meine Worte. Mga taga Hudea, at kayong lahat na nakatira sa Jerusalem, pakinggan ninyong mabuti ang sasabihin ko. Hindi lasing ang mga taong ito gaya ng palagay ninyo. Alas 9 pa lang ng umaga ngayon, ang nakikita ninyo'y katuparan ng ipinahayag ng propetang Joel. Ito ang gagawin ko sa mga huling araw, sabi ng Diyos. Ibubuhos ko ang aking espiritu sa lahat ng tao. Ipahahayag ng inyong mga anak na lalaki at babae ang aking mensahe. Ang inyong mga kabataang lalaki ay makakakita ng mga pangitain at ang inyong matatandang lalaki ay magkakaroon ng mga panaginip. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We only had a few different languages sharing the events of Pentecost, but can you imagine what it must have been like to hear people telling God's story in their own language, praising God and witnessing to the risen Christ? There was dunamis power poured out on the disciples that day. They were dynamic and bold in their speech. So let's see if you can speak loudly the bold words on the screen, even though you might be watching this at home alone. I invite you to stand if you're able. Imagine you are in with others in the sanctuary. The day of Pentecost is here. The day when the flames of faith dance in our hearts. The day of Pentecost is here. The day when our babbling speech becomes the good news for the world. The day of Pentecost is here. The day when compassion is seared into our souls. The day of Pentecost is here. Let the people of God rejoice. Alleluia. Let's praise God as we not only listen, but sing the words of filled with the Spirit's power. Filled with the Spirit's power, with one accord.
This hymn reminds us that what happened 2,000 plus years ago can still happen today. God's power can transform lives when we continue to confess and witness to the risen Lord. That same dunamis power that created the world and gave new life to Jesus, rose him from the dead, is present with us today. Power that can bring unity, joy, and peace that will bring every tribe and nation to proclaim the love that comes from being a follower of Jesus. Are we seeing this power today? What's your answer? If yes, where? If no, why not? This past week, I received a gift that was pretty amazing. This corn cob, when put in a bag and placed in a microwave, becomes popcorn. The transformation was absolutely amazing. This looks beautiful, serves as a decorative purpose, but the popcorn not only looks beautiful, but tastes beautiful. Even with the microwave, I had to wait a little while for the transformation to take place. Granted, it was a short wait, but it reminded me that the disciples were told by Jesus to wait in Jerusalem after his resurrection and ascension. Little did they know why he wanted them to wait. Hear the scripture from Luke chapter 24. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Jesus was explaining to the disciples the story of salvation from the beginning. When the relationship between God and humankind was broken, God put into motion a plan for reconciliation through the law, and through the prophets, but that didn't help people. They still didn't love God or serve God the way that God needed. A Messiah, a Savior had to come from heaven to earth to reconcile us through his suffering, death, and resurrection. The plan took a long time. People had a long wait, and God knew that even with them witnessing a powerful, once-in-a-lifetime experience, they needed an extra boost of power to find courage to boldly witness and tell the story of Jesus and God's love and forgiveness for others. So, what are you waiting for? Well, we wait for graduation. We wait to get a job. We wait to get married. We wait to have children. We wait for grandchildren. We wait to go to our eternal home. And during this past year, we have been waiting for an end to this pandemic. We have been waiting for a vaccine. There is frustration, fear, and even anxiety in the waiting because there are always unknowns in the waiting. However, when we wait with God, when we trust God, when we believe that God's desire is to give good gifts to us, joy comes and joy is powerful. First, to discover joy in the midst of sorrow is powerful. Mary and Martha were filled with sorrows because Jesus did not come in time to save their brother Lazarus. But then Jesus raised him from the dead. That was God's Holy Spirit at work, and there was joy. To experience joy in the midst of pain is powerful. In childbirth, women labor with much pain before they deliver, but there is joy in holding that newborn baby. Thirdly, to embrace joy in the midst of hopelessness is powerful. Abraham and Sarah Elizabeth and Zechariah faced 
hopelessness. It was impossible for them to experience the joy of having a child, or so they thought. But both Sarah and Elizabeth had a child, only by the power of God. Waiting is necessary for a healthy baby to be born. It takes nine months. The people here at St. Andrew have been waiting for things to change. But little did we know that God was going to pour out his power to transform not only our building, but our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and give us a voice to proclaim the working of God's spirit in our lives. You know, it's a joy to meet people of all nationalities like at the first Pentecost. And we are able to hear the witness of God's work in people's lives. It was a joy to see so many people working in the giving garden. Nineteen families brought seedlings and children worked with the adults to plant them in the beds. And the extras were taken to Christ Church Kettering and Mosaic at the Mall for people to grow them in their own gardens. It was a joy to see men and women coming to pack, move, clean, paint, refresh, revive, and transform rooms for new purposes. But you know, for some of us, seeing the rooms of our building being cleaned, painted, and repurposed brings a sense of wonder and excitement. But for others, there's grief and anxiety. Both feelings of excitement and grief has the potential for seeing God at work through God's Holy Spirit. Friends, we need to be sensitive to both, but not let either hinder the work and the power of God to transform us. You see, we can only stay for a season, but we eventually we need to let go, trust God to see the miracles God has in store for us. And because of our breakthrough prayer, there's a lot that's happened. So let's remember what that breakthrough prayer was for this year. It was God of breakthroughs. We boldly ask you to heal us from our past hurts and former labels. While we fully trust that you will take care of our present needs, propel us past our self-imposed and natural limitations so that we may live and thrive through the limitless power in our individual lives and collectively as your church. Amen. You know, you have seen the sign that says New Church Fall 2021, and it's daunting. But it's exciting to see just how our new church will look in the fall. God's power working in and through us to awaken our community so that they will notice that there actually is a church at this location. You see, God's desire is to fill us with his power. Power that will not only bring joy, but love and peace. If your life is feeling empty, if your life is filled with anxiety, if there are giants looming and you don't know how to discover and experience love, joy, and peace, then I want to invite you to ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Because God longs for you not only to receive the Holy Spirit, but to experience his power in your life. The power that created the universe and raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that was poured out on the disciples to spread the good news with boldness in every language. And that same power can help you discover joy over sorrow, pain and anxiety. And your waiting can be over. I also want to invite you to join me on a Zoom one-hour for Lunch and Learn on Wednesdays at noon for a six-week study called Goliath Must Fall. You will not want to miss this. The sign-up can be found on We Are Mosaic website. You know, go to the tab, connect, and then drop down to discipleship and you'll find that registration. And I want to assure you that God is holding you in the palm of his hand and nothing 
can ever separate you from his love because God's grace is powerful and available to all. So as we prepare for this next hymn, let us sing this as a prayer. God of grace and God of glory. Remembering that God is wanting to transform us just like the popcorn, just like the flowers that begin with a seed and then stem, then the leaves and then the blooms. You see, we wait for a season in order to see God's powerful love that can transform and bring joy. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Down thy ancient church's story, bring her but to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Friends, for our prayer today, I invite you to pray too by praying the words in the bold print. Lord, today as we remember the first time your disciples experienced the Holy Spirit, we too want to experience your Holy Spirit today. Come, whirlwind of wonder. Sing to the groaning of creation. Come, still small voice of hope. Inflame us with your passion for justice. Come, liberator of the least. Purify us of our grasping greediness. Come, advocate for selfless living. Silence our gossiping tongues. Come, harmony of God's heart. Wind of God, blow through us. Fire of God, burn within us. Tongue of God, speak to us. In this day of renewal and birth, even as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen because of your giving we are able to do the online worship and we are preparing for in-person worship in the fall because of your generosity worship gardening connecting with the staff parents and children at fairbrook are ways in which we share god's love hope and joy friends you can give online or through the mail and i encourage you to do what god's telling you to do in your hearts let us pray lord receive our gifts tithes and offerings Bless our giving, not only of our money, but our lives, so that we will be filled with your power, so that it can flow through us and bring others to follow Jesus too. You loved us first, and our giving is a response to your love for us. We are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Closing him is one of my favorites from long ago. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Just as the hearts of the disciples were ablaze on that first Pentecost. You'll see all these beautiful candles here. Reminding us that God calls us to be a light for us to shine too. Let's sing. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on shine fill this land with the father's glory play spirit blaze set our hearts on fire flow river flow flood the nations with grace and mercy set forth your word lord and let there be light To your awesome presence From the shadows into your radiance By the blood I may enter your brightness Search me, try me, consume all my darkness Shine on me Shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine Fill this land with the Father's glory Set our hearts on fire Flow, river, flow Flood the nations with grace and mercy Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light As we gaze on your King so our faces display your likeness ever changing from glory to glory 
Spirit, hear, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Play, Spirit, play. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, at Friends, as we close, you are God's precious child. You are loved. Be filled with God's Holy Spirit and experience the power that transforms your heart to love more deeply, to forgive more readily, and to shine brightly wherever God sends you as his ambassador to draw people to Jesus, our Savior. Amen. group Raising Disciples via Zoom begins June 14th at 8.30 p.m. Grab your lawn chairs and join us for a more intimate worship experience on May 23rd at 6.30 p.m. for worship on the lawn at our St. Andrew campus featuring some very special guests. Women are invited to a picnic at Mosaic at St. Andrew on June 26th from 1 to 3 p.m. Come for great food, guest speaker, and a chance to meet other women in this amazing church family.